Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A few days ago, I released a free mini course on Luminar Neo. After I released that course, I received some questions about the application. In today's video, I'm going to answer those questions. If you haven't yet downloaded my free Luminar Neo mini course, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to my website. There, you could stream or download the videos. You could download all of the raw files that I use in the videos. And I also have a free set of Luminar Neo presets that I created exclusively for that course. There's also another video there where I demonstrate how to install those presets and how to download the videos and the raw files. So all that is on my website. I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. And again, it's absolutely free. Now, one of the questions I received is crop overlays. Uh, somebody noticed that if you opened up the crop tool, you have a rule of thirds crop overlay. And they were wondering, how do you get other crop overlays here? Well, the answer is you can't. The only crop overlay available is rule of thirds. At least at this point in Luminar Neo's development. Hopefully sometime down the road, they add other types of crop overlays there, like, you know, golden ratio and golden spiral and stuff like that. But right now, all we have is rule of thirds and you can't turn it off and you can't change it. So that question was pretty easy to answer. Now, the next question really wasn't a question. Somebody made a statement that it's a shame that you can't reorder the tools on the right hand side, because if you're working with a smaller screen, like, you know, a laptop or a MacBook or something, uh, you do have to scroll quite a bit and you'll have to do a lot of jumping around searching for the specific tool you might want to use. And that is true. You cannot reorder these tools, but you can do a couple different things that may help you at least minimize the scrolling. The first thing you could do is you could collapse each of these sections. If you notice, if I go to the right of image quality, there's a little downward facing arrow. Just click on that and these arrows, and you could then collapse each of these sec sections. Once you collapse each of the sections, then you could just jump to the section you need to use right away. So let's say you know you're going to start out in essentials. You could go here, do the tools you want to do here, collapse that, jump to another section. Now that's a nice way to do it. You don't have to do as much scrolling, but you still kind of have to know where the tool is that you want to use. For example, you might want to use a tool and you're not exactly sure where it is, and it might be way down here in professional, and you're searching around up here in creative. So that is one way, but it's probably not the best way. There's another way you could help this, though. Uh, what you could do is you could favorite these tools, and when you favorite them, it puts them in their own section. For example, I always use develop. It could be develop like it is right now or develop raw. Either way, I always use that tool. So I could favorite this. To favorite, just right-click on it, then add to favorites. And when you do, it will remove it from where it was, and it will put it at the very top in a section called favorites and it doesn't matter if it says develop or develop raw because for example this is an edited image if you go over to edits you can see i already used develop raw on it and if you saw my mini course you know i explained the difference between develop and develop raw but the deal is is if you had an unedited raw file this will say develop raw for example if i go down here to the circle and three dots and revert to the original so the unedited raw file Notice that it switched to develop raw. So it doesn't matter. You don't have to put it there twice or anything like that. And I want to undo that. Sorry, I hit the wrong key. All right. So that is one favorite. Let's add some more. I sometimes use Enhance AI, right click, add to favorites. I don't use Erase that much. I use Structure quite often. I'll add that to favorites. Um, one thing, though, I should note. Let's say I like Light Depth. I use that a lot. If you have any of these tools open and you try right-clicking, nothing will happen. In order to favorite it, you're going to have to have it closed. Then you could right-click and add it to favorites. And then one final note. Notice now I have develop, enhance AI, structure AI, light depth. 
I want to add vignette because I often use a vignette. It's not going to put it at the bottom. It's going to put it in its relative location where it was below, meaning if I right-click on it and I add it to favorites, it will be above light depth and you can't reorder these so unfortunately you cannot have your favorites in an exact order they're still going to be in the order they were down below but at least you'll have them up here these are ones that you often use so then you could come up here and just not have to scroll as much now if you want to remove something from favorites right click on it and you could remove it from the favorite so very easy to add and remove just make sure that the tool is closed though when you do it again if you have the tool open you won't be able to favorite it or anything like that all right another question i received is someone said that they thought you were able to remove power lines in luminar neo with a single click and they can't find it it is kind of buried it's in the erase tool now, in my opinion, it doesn't always work that great. Let me show you. I have this image here, and you can see there's some very fine power lines here. Something like this, it should work fine. So I'll go to the Erase tool, and it's down here at the bottom. Maybe yours is closed, and you didn't see it. It's called Objects Removal, and you'll notice you could remove the power lines. And it does also, you could remove dust spots. And it's not just dust spots. You know, it could be sensor spots, even, you know, dirt on your filter or your lens, anything like that, it will remove it. And that works pretty well. The power lines though, when I click on it, you can see it's removing. Now, how long it takes really depends on how difficult uh, of the job. Now these power lines look really simple, but actually this is kind of difficult because these power lines are very thin. So this will take a while. Where it goes much faster is when the power lines are really thick and heavy. Now you can see here, it removed the power lines. It did a great job, beautiful job. And when it does, you still have the erase tool. So if it missed a chunk, you could use the erase tool to make up for it. But let's go to another image here. For example, the power lines here are much thicker, but you see we have the, the windmills in the background. So we'll go to the erase tool. Again, we'll remove power lines. And here, I think you'll notice it won't work as well. We also have the kind of stormy sky behind it and you'll notice then that we have these faint lines and if i zoom in a little bit you could see that we have these lines here where the power lines were so that's an issue now we still have the erase brush so i could come in maybe and try to get rid of the the uh the lines this way but what you'll find is if i try to do a big chunk like that and then click erase it sometimes won't do a great job, as you can see. So what you need to do is you got to do little bits, like little bits at a time. And hopefully it works and still doesn't look right. So let's clear that. That's in, you know, as a matter of fact, reset the entire tool. Um, and it, it really, like I said, it, like here, we have these power lines and we'll go to the erase tool and we'll remove power lines. And it will still remove the power lines, but... Anything behind, you can see the siding on this house, these houses, I should say. We zoom in a little. You can see how it's kind of all mangled. So it didn't necessarily do a great job. So in my opinion, missed some of the power line over here as well. So in my opinion, uh, this is probably a tool that needs a little more work, but it is available. It is in the erase tool. All right. Now, someone also um, said... They don't know how to use layers because they're looking over here at layers properties. And when they roll this open, uh, like how do you add a layer, remove a layer? It just doesn't really show you how. Well, that's over here actually on the left-hand side. You'll notice on the left-hand side, we have layers, right? And we have our single layer. This is the base layer. If you want to add a layer, you click the little plus sign. You could add your own image that you might have added in the past you could load an image, so you could load another. So if you're doing some compositing and you have an image of a clipped out model and you want to put the clipped out model in a scene, uh, you could then load that image by clicking here or bring up a finder window and you can navigate to where that image is. And then you could add that image to the scene. You also could add some things that it has with it. It has some flares, as you could see here, it has the, these light leaks. You'll notice with light leaks, there's a little like right here right hand spacing kind of arrow so there's a lot more here yeah. or you could just click up here see them all or see all you notice sparklers it's called uh stardust bokeh so all this comes with 
uh, Luminar Neo. I didn't add anything here. Flares, Light Leaks, Sparklers, Stardust, Boko. That all comes with Neo, so I didn't add that. This stuff up here, my images, that stuff I added. So if I want to do, say, a Light Leak, something like this, I want to like, make it look like you know, an old time photo or something like that. So I could add that. You can see how we have that layer there now. And then with this layer here on the right hand side with layer properties, this is where this would come in. So I could maybe change the mode to something else. So it looks more of what I imagine it should look like or whatever. I don't know what I'm doing, uh, <laughs> but you could come in and change the, uh, the blend here. So let's say just for the sake of argument, you do that. You can pull the opacity down. You can flip your image around if you want to. Stuff like that. If you want to remove this, come over here and right click on it and then remove that layer. So we're right back here. Now, another thing you may want to do is you may want to put specific adjustments on their own layer. For example, this is a fully edited image as far as I'm concerned, like I'm done. But I might be thinking, I wonder what that would look like in black and white. So what I could do is I could go over here and right click on this layer, duplicate that layer. So I'm on the duplicated layer now. Then with this layer on this layer, I would go up and say black and white and I would convert to black and white. And then I could do a black and white mix, let's say on this. Let's just do something really quick. All right, so we have this black and white image now. So this layer is our black and white layer. If I want to see my color layer, I could just right click on this and I could just hide this layer. And then I'm seeing my color layer or I could go back and show the layer. That's one option some people do. So they'll do an adjustment. Uh, sometimes people like to do noise reduction on its own layer or sharpening on its own layer. If that's the case, duplicate that layer, then do the noise reduction or the sharpening on that duplicated layer. So you have that option. You, again, to remove it, just go down here, remove it just like that. So that's how layers in a nutshell works with Luminar Neo. It's relatively uh, simple to use. Now, the last question I'm going to answer in this video has to do with skies. Um, somebody took my recommendation and they bought OccuDrone Skies. Again, I feel OccuDrone Skies are the best third-party skies in the market. I'll have a link to their skies in the description below this video. Check them out. I think uh, you'll really like OccuDrone Skies. The thing is, though, once you buy those skies or any skies from anywhere, even in your own skies, how do you get your own skies into Luminar Neo? Well, to do that, go to, let's go to a different image too. Let's you go over on the right-hand panel, and once it comes alive, go to Sky AI. And this is kind of confusing because it's not, like, obvious. How do you get skies in here? Well, go then to Sky Selection, this drop-down. You'll notice you have some skies. And you might think, click Get More Skies. That's just going to take you to Skylum's website so that you can buy their skies. If you have your own skies or you bought skies yourself from somewhere else, like those OccuDrone skies, go to this drop-down now. So it's a drop-down inside of a drop-down. Go to this drop-down, then go to this drop-down. And you'll notice I have a bunch of OccuDrone skies. I put OD in front of it, so they all are next to each other here. I still, again, I think they're the best skies in the market. So I'm going to go to Show Custom Skies, and here are the custom skies. Then all I need to do is I could then minimize this and on my desktop i have the latest set of acudrone skies these acudrone astrotopia skies so i'm going to take these and put these in here now those skies are in this folder where luminar neo can see them and then when you go to luminar neo now and you go to the sky ai and I go to sky selection and I go to this drop down. I have those Astrotopio skies. I just put them there and then I could pick one. Let's pick one like that one. Let it enter it. You could see what it did. And then I could just do my normal um, sky thing and I want to add a reflection. I add the reflection down there. Maybe a little bit of a blur. So, anyway, that is how you get skies into Luminar Neo. It is kind of confusing. It's kind of buried into this tool, 
but it's actually easy to do once you know where to go. So there are there are five questions that I received on this application because I just released that free mini course on Luminar Neo. Again, I'll have that linked in the description uh, below this video. Also have a link to those uh, skies from Aki Drone. I also have a discount code for them that you could take advantage of. And that's it for this video. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.